Hello. So I've said repeatedly in numerous videos on this channel and uh, even on some of my other channels that it is better to be wanted than it is to be needed. And what I recognize now is that this is a fundamentally different paradigm than many people are taught about how to relate to women, specifically young men in society today. And I was listening to another podcast. It was actually the, uh, what was it, the Chris Williamson or Chris Williams uh, podcast where he was talking to Destiny. And one of the things that he said kind of catalyzed uh, all this in my mind, and so I'm just going to give you some context before I jump into eight things that you can do to be wanted rather than needed. And he pointed out that uh, young women today are graduating, uh, high, uh, <laughs> graduating college at a higher rate than men, and this has been true since my generation too. Um, us millennials are when that tipping point happened. Um, and But now even more so, they're more successful in their career and they're buying more houses than young men. And so the point here is that society is changing. There are major structural shifts, and women don't need men. They don't need them. They're more financially independent um, and intellectually independent and socially independent. And so many, many uh, young women are just kind of opting out of long-term relationships. And in fact, um, if you go and judge by conversations and statistics on the internet, uh, if they're any measure, then um, Gen Z and younger millennials are in really bad shape. They don't know how to do relationships, and they're kind of scared of each other almost. And there's a, what, what really surprised me, basically, is that there's a lot of loneliness and confusion on both sides. Young men and young women are really lost. And so this video is more for young men. I'm going to share kind of what has worked for me as a, as a more progressive, modern man who has been with um, plenty of women and is married to uh, my currently my best friend. So let's uh, dive right in. So number one, and I'm always talking about this, is how to make women want you, how to be wanted rather than needed. Uh, number one is passion, passion in all ways. So this is cultivating passion for life. Um, you see this kind of caricaturized in, you know, whenever you see, uh, you know, uh, Latin cultures or uh, Italian or Greek where they're just like big motions and they love life and they invest in, you know, pleasures and, and enjoyment and those sorts of things. Doing that is critical. Um, passion for women is also critical. Like you have to want passion. You have to have libido. Um, but really passion just shows that you're, you're actively engaged with your life. Uh, and there's all kinds of ways to do this. I know some of you have asked, so if you want, let me know in the comments and I'll do an entire video just on passion because this is, in, in my experience and my observation, this is where it all starts. If you, st if you have passion, if you have energy um, and, you're, and you're fully engaged, the rest will kind of work itself out with a little bit of nuance. Um, so anyways, number two is be fun. Uh, if people enjoy time with you, women or otherwise, they'll want to spend more time with you. If you're a downer, people won't want to spend time with you. Um, so a good proxy for that is notice how much time people are spending smiling and laughing. Um, help create interesting and novel experiences. Now, what I want to cultivate or want to caution you on here is that just being fun for the sake of being fun is being a clown. So I don't mean like go out of your way to just, you know, make a fool of yourself or, or that sort of thing. Cultivate the parts of you that are active and engaging um, and just generally fun to be around. Um, let your natural personality shine through. And if it's hidden by layers of, of trauma and loneliness and isolation, do the work to get through that. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but generally speaking, if you're spending time with the right people, you'll just have more fun together. And people will remember that consciously or unconsciously. They're like, man, this guy's a lot of fun to hang out with. Let's, let's do that again. Number three is be safe. Uh, if you watch many, many interviews with women, um, the, women still generally feel very unsafe in this world. Uh, even in Western worlds where uh, where uh, women are statistically much safer, um, they're still, they still feel very unsafe. And so one thing that you as a man can provide a woman is just a sense of safety. And I don't mean like protection. I don't mean like, you know, go study martial arts and buy a gun and threaten to beat people up. Um, but providing a sense of emotional safety as well as physical safety is kind of what I mean. And woman has to feel safe with you personally as well, not just safe from the world because of you, but safe with you not and rather than being afraid of you as well. And this is something that, um, you know, that for instance, my wife uh, tells me often is that she, I just help her feel safe. Um, and, you know, we're both martial artists and, uh, you know, 
I have never, like, gosh, it's been so long since I've been in a fight. And the only two fights that I've been in in my life were in the defense of a woman because some drunk asshole attacked her. Um, <laughs> but she's like, I know that about you, and that makes me feel safe. Um, and so anyways, just, and I'm not saying, like, you need to have that capacity, uh, but cultivating uh, that, that within yourself in order to help a woman feel safe, that will make her want to be with you rather than need to be with you. Number four, provide containment. So containment is a uh, kind of a, this, is, this might feel like more of a red pill idea, but containment is something that, that men are supposed to offer women and also that fathers are supposed to offer children. Um, and so it's providing leadership, structure, and guidance are kind of the three pillars of containment. Uh, and so in this respect, my wife is a few years younger than me, so I have more life experience than her. And so even though she is independent, there is still many, many things that I can teach her. And so, for instance, making sure that, like, the house is taken care of and our cars are taken care of. It's not that I do all this myself, but I provide her that leadership and that guidance and so that she, she knows that she's navigating life better because of me being in it rather than us, you know, trying to help each other or her taking the lead. Um, there's a lot of theory as to why this works, but it, in my experience, it does work very well. Uh, and so if you get to a point where you are, and it, it, age doesn't necessarily matter because my wife is younger than me, um, but being able to provide containment is more about how solid you are in your life, how much control you have over your life. And I don't mean control in a, I need to micromanage everything, but I mean like, are you on top of everything and can you handle everything that life throws at you? The more you are in that situation where you can emotionally, financially, physically, intellectually handle all the ups and downs of life, and you've been through the ringer a couple times, if that is something that you can offer to a woman, then she will, uh, she will recognize that leadership and she will, again, feel safer with you um, knowing that, like, hey, life's going to be okay with this guy. Number five is celebrate her success um, and independence. So one thing that really kind of always confused me when I when I've occasionally dipped into the the current manosphere is like the so-called alpha men are like um they're like oh men don't want strong independent woman that's if they wanted to marry a man cuz that's gay and I'm just like what it has long been known that power is the greatest aphrodisiac in the world like every time a roman emperor visited cleopatra there were more babies um cleopatra was a queen <laughs> um and so you know uh, yeah, I don't get that. I think that, I think that, that, that men who say, oh, they want a, a meek and mild housewife, I think that they're intimidated by, by stronger and independent women. And so then they project their insecurity and say, oh, well, real men don't want that. No, <laughs> that is absolutely wrong. Uh, real, quote unquote, real men want the highest status woman that they can attract. Um, and quote unquote, real men, uh, will, will climb to a higher status. Like so another way to put it is an alpha man wants an alpha woman. A beta man can only attract a beta woman. And I'm not saying that I believe in that theory, but to use their lingo, their, their language, language or lingo, good grief to use their verbiage. There we go. Um, to use, to use the, the, the red pill verbiage. Um, if if you're if you claim to be an alpha and you want a beta woman, you're not a you're not a you're not an alpha man. Sorry, um, but yeah. So the greatest aphrodisiac is power, and so uh, every time that my wife you know gets a promotion or um, you know does something good, it's like that is actually very attractive to me. And uh, and yeah, we I celebrate her and I encourage her, and I'm, and every time she's like, hey, I want to do this thing and I want to go bigger and higher, and I'm like, do it go for it. And she's like, thank you. <laughs> um, people that believe that still believe that women need to quote unquote, know their place and stay in the kitchen or whatever. They're just afraid because they're insecure. Uh, number six, invest in yourself, uh, learn and grow and heal, do the hard inner work of overcoming, you know, childhood trauma or being bullied in school or having come from a terrible family or whatever. Uh, everyone, everyone, <laughs> everyone has messed up. Um, welcome to the club. Uh, but what I will say is that is that for various reasons, whether it is social reasons or evolutionary reasons or whatever, women generally are more comfortable doing the inner work. Um, and so if so one of the most common frustrations that I see out there is that a woman is doing the inner work and they're healing and learning and growing, but a man is paralyzed. 
they're afraid to do the inner work. They pathologize it. They say, you know, emotions are for pussies and I don't need no therapy or whatever. And so then they get frustrated and leave. Um, stagnation is kind of the word that has been used uh, repeatedly. So if a woman is outgrowing her man, she's going to leave. If, if you're stuck, if you're stagnant, and, you know, like even the word stagnant, like you think of like a rotten pool, you know, like a bog, uh, that's no good. Um, you will get outgrown and you will get left. Um, but the thing is, is investing in yourself, whether it is physical improvement, learning how to eat better, learning how to do the uh, emotional work, whatever, like your life will get better irrespective of whether or not you're with a woman. Um, but that that commitment to personal growth is also very attractive to women. And it's something that, that and at least in my experience, many women admire in a man. Number seven, be the right person. So I've talked about this one before. Um, there's other ways of saying it. So like be the best version of yourself or live your best life or whatever. But being the right person is, is about authenticity. It is about really kind of, you know, again, getting rid of all the layers of muck and bad lessons that you've learned and emotional baggage and whatever and working through all that and being really authentic about who you are and what you really want and what you really need. Um, because again, if you're, if you're confident enough to, uh, engage with that version of yourself and you're unapologetic and you're not fawning for attention, um, again, being the right person, that is part of being the right person. Also being kind. I've talked about that. I'm not going to go into that again. Um, also there were a few comments last time about that difference between being kind versus being nice. If you want me to do a full video on that, let me know in the comments. Um, and then number eight, marry your best friend. Um, if you, if, if you're into marriage, if you want that long-term commitment, um, you'll be spending a lot of time together. Um, my wife is definitely my best friend. Um, and we spend lots of time together. When we first started hanging out, we would talk sometimes for up to eight hours straight. Um, and that's how I knew that we had a special connection. Um, you know, there are, there are paradigms out there. There are, uh, there are people out there that will say, oh, you know, you, you marry someone based on the social arrangement you want, where you want someone who's a good mother, you want someone who's a good trophy wife, or whatever. You know, the red pill theory out there is like, there's a very clearly defined role. But it's like, no, I mean, you know, the opposites don't really attract. The more you have in common with someone, the better. Um, and, and look at all kinds of dimensions, from, um, from upbringing, to education, to financial ability, to religious and spiritual and political disposition. The more you have in common with someone, the easier it will be to get along with them. Um, but also, it's not just on those basic things. It's what do you care about? What hobbies do you have? Um, you know, I met my wife at a writing group. We're both writers. And that, that was a proxy for a lot of other aspects about us. And her best friend actually just met her boyfriend on a writing cruise. Um, so, you know, whatever, whatever is your key thing, you know, if you're a, if you love bees, go be a beekeeper and find, you know, find someone who find a, a lady beekeeper. Um, if you're a writer, if you're a carpenter, if you're whatever it is that you happen to do, um, that, you know, and even if it's video games, like there are chicks out there who play, who play video games. So anyways, those are eight pieces of advice of how to be wanted rather than needed. Oh, and I'll end with a little bit of a backstory here. So this whole thing started when um, my wife got a promotion. This was more than a year ago. Um, she got a job, she got a promotion, and she was feeling very confident about herself. And she looked at me and she's like, I want you, I don't need you. And I was like, well, that's pretty sexy. <laughs> but what the point is, is that when you're wanted, it reflects much better on you than rather than being needed. If all you are is a tool, if that's how you see yourself, is that you're an instrumental tool to a woman, that is no good. But if you're wanted, it's because you're wanted on many, many dimensions and many levels for having cultivated all these good things about yourself. Um, and so when she wants me rather than needs me, it makes me feel really good about myself. Um, and likewise, I want her. I don't necessarily need her, um, but I really, really enjoy having her in my life. And so we are better together. Um, and she even told me that yesterday. I took her out to celebrate because she sold a story. And she just, one of the things that she said is, my life is on a better path because of you being in it. Um, now, you might say that that's evidence of being needed rather than wanted. Um, but I will say that there is a fine difference. Anyways, I'm rambling now. Thanks for watching. Cheers.